Well, today on Nation, the Window Cleaners Podcast, we're talking all about house washing on the Window Cleaning Podcast, but it's a great add-on. If you do it or you don't do it, what the heck, stick around for WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? Hey, how are you? If it's your first time here, have a look around. I know we're not talking necessarily window cleaning today, but we're talking about always on the business side of things. There's a ton of content to catch up on. We have more than three years of content. Go back and watch or listen anywhere podcasts are available. If you are one of the cool kids, somebody who watches every episode, and you give a thumbs up on the video, and you comment on YouTube, but most importantly, you buy your supplies through me. What's up? What's up, Mr. or Mrs. Cool Kid? It is because of you that I have name brand shoes. What's your expensive? I shouldn't have said shoes. Something else cheap. Either way, if you're going to buy anything uh, window cleaning related, let me know. I'd love to put it in for you. I want to be your rep. 862-312-2026 is my number. Um, and things must be going good. I'm buying name brand shoes, man. No, but I do genuinely, genuinely appreciate every one of you who puts all your orders in through me. Um, it is because of you that I get to have this lavish lifestyle of, uh, you know, off-brand clothing. So thank you. Thank you. It's how I make my cheddar, uh, by doing that. So definitely, definitely check that out. By the way, a couple quick shout outs that I want to give is Mike Nichols, the man himself, one of my favorite people in all of the world. And uh, first off for him, by the way, best beard in the industry uh, is Mike Nichols. If you haven't seen it, it's amazing. Uh, you just have to check it out, for sure. Uh, Mark Kladzinski, Kladzinski, Kladzinski. What's up, man? I knew, I knew I was going to mess up your name. I didn't even try. I know your name, but I still messed it up. Uh, and what's up to Jesse, my homeboy there. What's going on, man? Um, but if you want a 15 minutes of fame and you want me to give you a shout out when you put an order and just be like, yo, give me a shout out. Also, another thing, if you ever want to hear a better or different or anything, uh, content ideas for the show, let me know. That would be amazing. Shoot me a text, call me, text me, whatever. Let me know. One other quick, 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 quick announcement. I'm sorry. Uh, windowcleaner.com forward slash printing is up and live get all your printing there and you can actually use me just tell them my name or let me put it in or anything and yeah it's like uh, an awesome thing if you're doing printing it's like an awesome awesome high five you then become my customer and uh, every time you order printing even if it's not through me i may credit for it so make sure to do that uh, anyway okay well we're talking about house washing uh if you don't know what it is you've been living under a rock um, if you are a window cleaner that does not do pressure washing at all, I highly, highly suggest that you do it. Um, same goes to you. If you're watching this and it's like new venture or maybe you're a pressure washer, doesn't do window cleaning. It sounds weird until you're in it, but window cleaning and pressure washing go together. So absolutely amazingly, amazingly. So if you offer one or the other offer, the other one, it's not that hard to get into. Window cleaning, super easy. It can get complicated uh, and equipment and stuff when you're going water fed. Pressure washing, super, super easy. And it can get complicated once you start talking about chemicals. But it's not hard. None of this is hard. We are not doing anything that is extremely hard. You can get better and you can get really good at it. And it's hard to be really good at something. But it's just not hard. So take the leap. Do it if you haven't already. Now, one thing to keep in mind, house washing itself is its own entity of pressure washing. So if you're doing pressure washing or not, as you know, there's pressure washing, which covers house washing, covers hardscape, so that's concrete. Maybe you're doing reclamation and garage floor cleanings, which I love doing. Um, maybe you're doing pool enclosures. Maybe you're doing um, soft washing roofs. Maybe you're doing any and all of that stuff. But house washing is the main facet of that. House washing basically is taking a solution and killing or treating, because it sounds fancier to a homeowner, is treating all the algae on a home or house or siding or anything. And algae basically comes uh, in a couple different forms. 
You got your normal algae, which is like that dark blotching. You get stripes on a roof. And you can also have algae um, uh, that's a reddish color, obviously. Uh, but there's also moss and lichens. Those are on roofs usually. Sometimes you run into mo moss on siding, but not too terribly regular. If you're up in like Washington area or those areas that get just tons and tons of rain, you probably know what moss is. I'm sorry. Moss is a pain in the butt. Basically, what you do is you treat it with a chemical called sodium hypochlorite. Now, sodium hypochlorite is a fancy word for bleach, kind of. Now, sodium hypochlorite itself is NaOCI. Um, bleach is just a different version of kind of the same thing. Now, what we do in our industry is we use a chemical, our active chemical, called sodium hypochlorite. You'll hear it called SH. But basically what it is is it's 12.5% bleach solution ish usually it can be found anywhere you buy chemicals so if you have a chemical supplier or maybe you've never bought it before just search either you know bleach sales or chemical suppliers even better almost every chemical supplier is going to sell it because it's such a popular uh, and widespread chemical um, but that's what we use it is basically bleach when you're done with a project it smells like a pool always it smells like a hospital maybe it's clean it's done but most importantly it's treated now what you do when you start with a house wash is if you don't actually treat it and you just take pressure and remove it you don't really remove all of it and it takes you a billion years and it looks like crap and you remove layers of it not all of it so there's like these weird stripes and it's just a whole mess so what you want to do is take that chemical Mix it with a surfactant, which is like uh, the sticky part of soap, basically. There's some great products out there. I'm not here to plug those. Um, but mix that together with water and shoot it out at low pressure and basically water the side of a house. Yes, it's that easy. Uh, if you have it, you're really just spraying that solution onto a house, letting it sit there. And if you ever want to watch a really cool time-lapse video, uh, time-lapse house wash something along those lines on YouTube. There's a whole bunch of them. Uh, look at them. They're, they're amazing. They literally, the chemical just kills everything and it just disappears in front of you. It leaves like a, like a dirty tinge almost and that's what you rinse off. But basically what you do is you take that and spray it on a house. Now, a lot of times people get kind of leery at the whole bleach thing and they want to find an alternative and everything else, but, but understand that bleach itself or SH, it's unstable. It easily decomposes. It's just, it is basically salt water that's electrified to kind of break it down. It's like the, the simplest form of it, if you will. Basically, as soon as the sun starts hitting it, it breaks it down bleach becomes inactive pretty darn quick if you take bleach you pour it out on the concrete and the sun dries it it's gone it's done it's just salt left right the mixture has been broken so it's easily decomposing it just really easily breaks down when it's active it is a chemical it's just like anything they consider it corrosive um it uh you know can bleach clothes as we all know of course but it does a lot of other things uh bleach itself is pretty decent on skin it can be an irritant but a lot of guys especially the old timers if you ever want to like test if your bleach is good you put your finger in and then like you see how much white is on your finger yeah so it's not bad it doesn't really cause anything but if you're looking for an alternative there are no great alternatives if you know of a great alternative comment down below if you're on youtube but uh there's really not like sh itself trying to find something other than that is like Hey, I got a gasoline engine. Uh, what can I use other than gas? Nothing. That'd be dumb. Could you put like, you know, diesel in there? Maybe if it ignited, like it just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to use something that's not, you know, what's needed to be used. But here's the thing. Once you spray that on in a soft fashion, you let it dwell, you let it sit there, you rinse it off. Boom. That is it. House washing is probably my favorite by far favorite um pressure washing or soft washing thing that i do it's just easy it's just easy it's easy money the results are amazing it just it looks really nice when it's done um but i mentioned soft washing what is soft washing basically we're taking a chemical 
we're combining it with water and we're applying it. So there are 12 volt options, uh, which is like a little pump you'd hook up to a car battery, something along those lines. Um, there's also air diaphragms and um, uh, sprayers. Some people will go in with a regular sprayer. The best thing that I like to do is I have a pressure washer with something called an X-Jet. Uh, yes, we sell X-Jet, X-Jets. Let me know if you have questions on it, but an X-Jet itself is what I've been using for years and years. And all that does is it's an injector at the tip of the gun with a on-off valve. So you carry the chemical with you and you're actually plant spraying it with a power washer. Now, in our industry, I would say that four gallon a minute machine is really kind of where you start four gallon a minute 3500 psi somewhere in that area and people always say well i don't want a pressure washer used it damages my siding and if i just used it for the pressure it would but what an x jet does is it actually opens up the orifice the hole in the end of the tip and it allows to draw air and it drops the pressure way down you can put your hand right in front of it um obviously cover my butt don't do that but you could right uh, it's not bad, but what that does is it draws chemical. That chemical mixes with the water. You spray it onto the siding, and that is how you soft wash. Now, I think it may be illegal for me to even say that term because I think it's like trademarked, but that's the process. Sorry, it's like Kleenex. It's trademarked, but that's what you wipe your nose with, right? But soft washing with an X-Jet and chemical is literally that. You're just... Spraying the chemical on, letting it sit there. You turn the valve off. Now you got water, but it's still through that tip. So now you're spraying just water, no chemical, and you just rinse it all down. It's so easy. Sometimes people get a little bit too carried away with it. And, oh, what do I need to add? I need to put all this stuff. It, you don't need that. If you're in the South, you know what house washing is because you have to have it done so often. But I'm telling you, in the North, like little Canada, I uh, actually got to charge a lot more because there was so little people doing it than down here where um, I still am not cheapest, but uh, definitely don't charge what we were charging in Wisconsin. So something to think about. Uh, if it's saturated, it's because it's needed. If it's needed, it's going to become saturated. So uh, keep in mind that if you haven't done it already. But X-Jet's the best way to go. It's super, super simple. You can actually change out the proportioners, uh, which are the little valves in that, and it changes the amount of solution pulled, but there's really not a need for that. Um, for me, I just leave it in what it is and, and draw that way. Um, but again, water, SH, and surfactant. It's just that easy. All right, guys, thanks. Have a great... No, but that really is that easy. It's like uh, roof cleaning. We've talked about roof cleaning before where um, all you do is just hose it on and that's it and you walk away. Sometimes there's things that you're like, that's just too easy, right? And there is. It is too easy, but uh, it has amazing, amazing results. But here's the all-time question. Of course, what do you charge? What are you expecting to make on that? Now, on a normal house wash, I'm going to average about probably... 200 an hour ish 150 something like that um i apologize it's summer and i forgot to turn my fan on so it's warm it's warm um i gotta wait for the the makeup team to come in uh no uh but uh it's it's about about 150 200 an hour now on a normal house depending on your area we start at 249 for a house wash that's a very typical uh, cookie cutter style, very basic style house. And you go up from there. Some people do square footage. Uh, some people do linear footage. Some people kind of look at the projects and you can kind of do it either way. Uh, it doesn't matter how you charge for it. Um, that's about what you're kind of averaging up. And I've done houses as much as thousands and thousands of dollars for a house. It just depends on how big it is. If you're going to get to a house where uh, Deep South has... Um, like plantation-y style houses where it's very, very wooded. And then these monster houses, uh, we have one like 12,000 square feet house maybe. Maybe it's a little less than that. Giant, giant, giant houses. Like every time you turned around, there was another nook and cranny. And uh, they just take a long time. So you're applying it to every little bit. With that extra, you can usually shoot about 30 feet if there's no wind. Um, uh, 
shooting up that high, you can get first and second stories, dormers, that type of thing. All kind of with that. One tip to take with you at this, even if you do it already, is as you're soaping, you start on the bottom and soap up. And as you're rinsing, you rinse up and go down. And the reason is, is because algae flashes. Algae itself, as soon as that chemical hits it, it flashes, ah, right, instantly. It's the same thing if you watered it first and then sprayed that down, it doesn't work as well because it's already kind of saturated. But if it's dry and you spray that on, it flashes and dies instantly. Now what you'll see if you do it from top to bottom uh, the wrong way in your uh, spraying is that some of those drips as the overspray and mist hits, uh, it'll hit that first and the rest of it will go right over it and you'll actually see clean spots. So to get rid of that, you start at the bottom, work your way up. When you rinse, remember water goes down, you wanna rinse down, start at the top and come down. Hit the dormers, so hit uh, the soffit fascia, all that, gutter face, all that when you get up there and then rinse all that. And dwell time if you got a nice hot SH is maybe, probably, I don't know, minute, two minutes. You can see it at working, it's super, super fast. If you spray it on, and nothing's happening, your bleach is too weak. You need a stronger, hotter mix. Um, some people will get uh, SH from Walmart or something and they'll just get bleach. That sucks. That stuff comes out at like 6%. And by the time it sits there and breaks down, and by the time it even gets to the shelf, it's even less. You're talking like 3%. So it's really, really, really not the same. Don't do it. It's not worth it. Go with an SH, 12.5%. It's really where you want to be. I've used 15% also. It just costs you more money and doesn't really do all that much. 12% mixing like, uh, you know, with an X-Jet or something. I mean, it's hot enough to do what you need it to do. So definitely something to do. If you're charging more than that, let me know your pricing down below too. I would love, love, love to hear it. Pricing varies all across the country though. So if you are in the north, you may be charging more or less. When I was in Wisconsin, the biggest patch of algae I ever saw was like a size of a football. It was weird. I was like, whoa, look at that. I don't even know how it happened. That was it. We don't have algae. It's too cold for anything to grow up there. But you go down into the south where I live now and uh, drive through the neighborhood. When I first was here driving to uh, meeting up with a buddy, uh, I was driving through the neighborhoods and I'm like, whoa, there's so much green. Well... I didn't realize uh, in like right away. There's so many people, but that happens after one year. I just thought everything was super neglected. But if you're in the South, you're kind of lucky. You have uh, people who are going to do this type of service once a year at least. Uh, so get them on a rotating frequency because their house will get pretty bad pretty darn quick, especially like this year. As you see, like I'm trying real hard not to sweat all over. It's hot <laughs> up in my office. With air conditioning and it's hot, I just don't have my fan on. So, But if it's hot and you're in a hot, humid area, it's going to get algae all over the place. Um, one thing that you want to consider too when you're doing house washing is using some kind of uh, surfactant that has a conditioner in it. Now, um, there is a company that puts out a product called Fresh Wash that I really, really like. Uh, we actually sold it for a while, but we don't. Still my favorite by far. Uh, really, really good, and it has like a conditioner in it. So not only does it help kind of accelerate the SH itself, um, but it works great for cling, meaning sticking that solution on there. And uh, when you rinse down everything, your windows are not terrible at the end. If you don't use a conditioner, the salts that are in the SH, uh, especially if you let it dry, get on the windows, and then kind of spot them up, and it sucks. But good news you know a window cleaner right because you're doing window cleaning too so uh always the upsell is always there i always say um when we're done we try real hard to rinse everything down but i don't want to force water into areas it's not supposed to go so we rinse as best as we can but your windows may be spotted now if you want to ensure them not to be spotted we can come back through with our pure water system and wash all of those windows for you so now not only is your siding perfect but your windows are perfect and they'll both last the same amount of time Something along those lines. And people are usually great with it. 
I can usually do an add-on window cleaning for $99 on a cookie cutter style house with a pure water system. It takes me 20 minutes with setup teardown because you're really cleaning pretty clean windows because the solution kind of cleans a lot of that off. You're just finishing it off and detailing it, right? Another $99 for 20 minutes time, not too shabby, not too shabby at all. So something worth thinking uh, is always the upsell. The upsell is always there because people need it. Uh, it helps them out. It takes away another pain point. If they're hiring you to do the house wash, they probably don't want to do the windows themselves. Maybe they're too busy. I mean, you can free them up. Add it all together and now you're having higher, higher, higher tickets. By the way, tell me your average ticket. Go into your uh, CRM now if you have one and tell me what your average ticket is just in general down below. I don't even need to know what services. I just want to know your average ticket. Uh, I was talking with a guy two, three days ago and we were talking average ticket and he was telling me from last year to this year, his average ticket has gone up like 60 something percent. That's crazy. Are you doing more services? You know, are you doing um, more in-depth services? Are there add-ons or did you raise your prices? You know, these are all things that are pretty awesome. The less trips you have to make, the more those go up, right? Instead of doing five jobs in a day, you do two jobs but make more. And all of a sudden, those other three get moved on and that's how you fill up your schedule. That's how you get employees and more employees and grow. Super, super valuable. So something to think about is adding on house washing in general. But one thing we always talk about is expectations. You should always, always, always lay out expectations regardless of what you're doing. Services, window cleaning, gutter cleaning, roof cleaning, anything. Here's the problem with pressure washing is people assume that if you have a pressure washer, you're going to make everything look brand new again. And it's not always the case. If you know anything about house washing, there is something called aluminum siding and aluminum siding oxidizes. When I clean aluminum siding, it will look worse than when I started. And the reason is, is because aluminum siding is so old, they don't really do it anymore, uh, that the paint's oxidized. So now that powder all comes off and now you can see the siding through the, like the aluminum through the paint in places and it looks super blotchy. So I need to make sure that they know that, right? If I'm doing a house and there's a ton of artillery fungus or something, I need to let them know that artillery fungus is not going to come off. That's a spore. I'll go into all that. If you don't know what artillery fungus is, shotgun spores, uh, same thing. Just look it up. Uh, it sucks. It's in our industry. It's found in mulch. It's like a mushroom thing that shoots seed pods. It's stupid. But they're really, really, really hard to get off. Uh, but everything else, when you see algae, people go, oh, man, you're going to be here forever. Nope. It actually be really quick if you want to watch it. You can certainly do that. Uh, just watch out for overspray. I always let people know and they always stand behind me. It sounds worse than it is. I've never let people try to get sprayed, but sometimes people are amazed. Like, what? How are you doing that? I said, well... The chemicals that we use, they're only available through chemical suppliers. I have to buy them by the drum. You know, it's not something, and that's what it is. SH, you normally cannot find just regular place at 12.5%. Not good stuff, at least. So, people are super, super shocked. It's super, super fast. When you leave the house, the house looks clean and perfect. Unless you have rust or clay or hard water or, like I said, shotgun fungus. Now... If you are in the south and you have clay, there's still ways. You can still take that off. A simple uh, F9 works really, really well, F9 bark, or um, a One Restore. Something along those lines, you can take that. It's a chemical application, so you always want to charge for that above and beyond everything. After everything is SH'd, then rinsed, then you go in and apply your uh, rust around the outside or something. Uh, after the fact is usually usually best. You're not mixing chemicals and uh, you're going to take care of everything that needs to be done. Um, I just had a guy uh, that actually was trying to do hard water on brick. It was so gnarly. There's a difference between efflorescence and hard water, by the way. Efflorescence uh, comes from the brick. It actually is minerals that are coming out of the mortar and the brick. Where... Um, Hard water is coming from the outside, so a sprinkler head is putting it on there and drying, putting it on there and drying, putting it on there and drying. Um, splashes are coming up from the rocks or stone aggregate or something along those lines where now you're getting hard water deposits, right? But you could take all that off, it's just different processes. But 
going back to expectations, you have to let them know what the expectations need to be. If they know what's going to come off, what's not going to come off, they're able to kind of understand what they're paying for and what they're getting. If they know what they're getting before they even sign up and do it, they're happy when it's done. It's the same thing if you go and somebody's got a bunch of red paint all over the side of their house. If you don't actually go up and say, hey, there's paint on the side of the house, um, just want to let you know that'll still be there when we're done. We're just cleaning off the biologics. Uh, we're treating the house and then washing that. Then when it's all said and done, they see the paint. They go, yeah, he told me about that, right? If you don't, then they go, well, you have a pressure washer. You couldn't take that. I see pressure. People taking paint off of pressure washers all the time. And they just assume that it was going to come off. So just meet their expectations and you won't have to like juggle it down the road. By the way, if you have a pressure washer, there's some things that you're just not going to want to do. Like there's jobs where people are like, oh, I'm doing paint prep for this place. And I'll look at it and be like, no, the paint's too good. Like it's not coming off with that. I'm going to sandblast it and then I got to clean all the sand up. It's just not worth it. So downside is, is that you're going to be expected or they think that you're going to have uh, make everything look brand new that just isn't going to happen. So to circle back around, man, house washing is great. If you haven't done it, do it. It is really, really a great uh, add-on. Again, you're talking about $150 plus dollars an hour. Uh, yes, I've made more per hour on that. I've done probably $350, $375 an hour on house washing. Uh, but that's not every hour, obviously. So if you want to tell me down below... On YouTube, what you made, your best hours, that's cool. Uh, just know when you're new, that's not not really what everybody makes all the time. But averaging, you're definitely going to average about a buck fifty for sure uh, per hour for that stuff. So if you want to gear, if you want to get geared up, if you want to get the equipment, you can get into pressure washing for under $2,000 with everything. And, um, you know, it really is a really awesome, awesome add-on. You can upsell. Remember. If you do pressure washing and not window cleaning or vice versa, that person's going to say, well, before you pressure wash, let me get a window cleaner set up for when you're done. Or if you're a window cleaner, eh, I got to get my house washed. Let me get a pressure washer lined up before you get in and do the windows. Well, they talk to the other person. The other person goes, hey, we do everything. You're going to lose that job. You could potentially lose that job because you don't offer that. You may lose a window cleaning job because you don't offer pressure washing. It's crazy. Stay close to your 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 core, right? Uh, we used to do fleet washing. We got rid of that. Great account, uh, great accounts, but great service. Um, it was a lot of money. It just was too far from our core. If you get too far out, all of a sudden now you're doing painting and dog poop picking up and auto mechanics and you're doing everything. So stay to your core. These two services pair so well together because you have to clean the windows when you're done pressure washing and you have to pressure wash before you do the windows. It's great. It's a very cool add-on. Hopefully, you'll at least try it. And if you got questions, let me know. My number is 862-312-2026. That's my cell phone. You can call me or text me, of course. Uh, let me put your order in. I'll give you that plug right now. I want to be a rep. I want to be your rep. Please let me be your rep. That's my shameless plug. Just so you know. But no, if you have questions on getting into this, let me know. Shoot me an email. Jersey at windowcleaner.com. I'd love to help you. And this stuff is just, it's really, really, really cool. Um, there's some really good groups. Uh, check out Pressure Washing Resource on Facebook. Um, if you are a pressure washer and not a window cleaner, check out Pro Window Cleaning on Facebook. Both of those groups are really, really good. Very, very big and busy groups. A lot of information to kind of catch up on. But hopefully you're offering that service. Either way. This week's code, by the way, if you order, you tell me this code, you will get 5% off in free shipping. And uh, let's let's make it fun. Uh, Scrub-a-dub-dub. That's the, that's the code this week. Scrub-a-dub-dub. If uh, you give me code, uh, we'll get you 5% off the entire order and free shipping. Shoot me a text. It's always the best way. Yo, Jersey, everything's in my cart. The code is scrub a dub dub. I'm, I'm really excited to hear people say that now. Uh, scrub a dub dub. You know, here's the other thing. When we do codes, if we do a really bad code, people don't use it. They like don't even want to say it. So I hope you use it. 
I hope you use it. I hope you like it. Anyway, there you go. Go do house cleaning, house washing, do everything else. Uh, hopefully you're going to be awesome, but more importantly, until next time, go out there and be epic.